Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome you all, welcome you all to today's lecture. In last lecture we are discussing about the MSc 1 and MSc 2 and their polymorphism, their origin of polymorphism and difference, what is the importance of uh, different uh, polymorphic uh, MSc as well as why we have so many MSc's and how it is important. But uh, now the question is how these antigen are going to fit into that uh, MHC1 and MHC2 because we already discussed that a antigen should be processed and processed means it should be chopped into small pieces so that it can fit into MHC1 and MHC2 because MHC1 can accommodate 8 to 10 uh, approximately the uh, number of amino acid residue in the peptide and MHC2 can accommodate 13 to 20 amino acid containing peptide. So, big antigens, antigens may be 100 amino acids to few thousands amino acids right. So, it should be processed. So, this is today's topic actually the generation of alpha beta T cell receptor ligands ok. Ligands means because whatever any receptor binds with the ligand. So, these ligand are basically the processed or chopped antigen which is T cell receptor going to recognize. So, today's lecture again the generation of alpha beta T cell receptor ligands. The, gener the generation of alpha beta T cell receptor ligands before going to that detail let me discuss very simple thing that most of you already know. This is what I am showing in this uh, slide is one cell which uh, that has uh, mm, that has a nucleus here and this is the endoplasmic reticulum all are leveled though. This is cytoplasm the bluish part this is Golgi and there are important function of this Golgi is to send the protein to its membrane or different parts. So, Golgi to trans Golgi network and then secretory vesicle is formed that secretory vesicle goes to the membrane. If the protein is membrane bound then it stay there in the membrane, if the protein is secretory then it leaves the cell and coming into the um, surrounding medium or uh, fluid in inside the body. Similarly, if cell wants to take something from outside then we have different mechanism one is pinocytosis another is phagocytosis and normally all cells cannot do phagocytosis. So, what they do is this is endocytosis, this is mostly the receptor mediated endocytosis. So, the invagination happen and this become a vesicles come inside the cell and gradually it comes and fuse with the lysosome, then lysosome degrade the particle that taken from the outside. Besides this there is one more thing happen inside the cell which is called autophagy ok. Autophagy many many times it uh, misunderstood like that means cells are eating themselves that means one cell is eating other one that is not autophagy, autophagy that is you can say cannibalism. Autophagy means cell make some vesicle like thing and those vesicles are basically taken uh, I mean taking the cellular material. There are many many things inside the cell which is not used. So, just to recycle them cell makes a vesicle and uh, eat them. So, intracellular material they eat and chopped and reused for other purpose. So, they many many times it happened. So, we will come into that. So, the thing is why I am saying this particular picture or showing this particular picture is because MHC is synthesized inside the cell. So, all protein like any other proteins it will synthesize in the cytosol by the ribosome then it goes to Golgi and then Golgi ER then Golgi then through this Golgi trans Golgi network 
the MHC will go to the sec uh, I mean this membrane. Okay. And one more thing I I would like to mention here that normally what happen like any protein residing in the membrane like any receptor any kind of receptor not, not only immune system any receptor once one protein made inside the cell they have a life okay, normally uh, mentioned as a half life they have a life one protein is not that that protein synthesized once and it will remain forever. So, after certain time depending on the function many some proteins a few seconds some proteins a millisecond okay, they have lost their activity and some protein may stay for days. Okay. So, what happened to the receptor? Receptor goes to the membrane stay for some time. So, if this is the membrane suppose my this hand is membrane and receptor is staying like this. So, if this receptor stay forever, so continuously signal will be there. So, it is not happening. So, what is happening? There is always a recycling of receptor that means, the existing receptor will be internalized by endocytosis degraded if cell needs the same receptor again, they will make that receptor and send it through this channel. Okay. So, existing receptor inside uh, on top of cell membrane, they are internalized as well as new receptor is making and they are going outside and stay in the membrane. So, that is the normal process which ev almost every cells are doing because signal transduction or communication between cell to cell or environment outside environment to the cell is very important and everything is done by this receptor present in uh, mostly receptor present in the membrane except the steroid hormone receptor almost all receptor are staying in the membrane. Okay. So, any ligand so if anything is there say for example, Say for example, one receptor is here. Okay. So, some ligand will bind here and then some signal will go from one protein to another protein then this protein. So, that will continue and go and most of the time what happened this signal goes finally, to the nucleus as a transcription factors and new gene synthesis happen. Okay. So, it should not be continued say for example, in immune system what is going to happen if as long as antigen present signal should go till then like if the antigen is removed or clear signal should stop. So, this particular receptor if it is MHC it should also recycle. Now, today we are going to talk about how this antigen is processed fit into the MHC and going out to cell membrane. So, that T cell can recognize them. Okay. So, before I am before going to detail I am just reminding you again because I talk about this thing, but just to remind you again what is this? This is case of cytosolic pathogen what are the cytosolic pathogen? Mostly the virus right. So, virus grow inside the cell. So, these are the cytosolic pathogen who is taking care? MHC class 1, who is the target cell of this MHC 1? This is the CD8 cells that we already know and what is the result? Cell death. Same way there are some possible pathogens which grow inside the internal vesicles. Okay. So, they are intravesicular pathogens like protozoan parasite, leishmania, mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium lepri. So, this kind of pathogen grow inside the vesicle. So, red is the pathogen and you see there is, is it inside the vesicle. Who is taking care? This endocytic vesicles because, because of the low pH as there is one more thing happening in the cell system that more this these vesicles when they are going they become acidic and this acid activates some proteolytic enzyme which cleaves that. So, after that this cleavage it is going to be presented by MHC class 2 and MHC class 2 is presenting to which kind of T cells? CD4 T cells all you know we already discussed all these things just this is a recapitulation I am going to repeat I told you many times that I am going to repeat things because many times it get confused. So, just to going in detail of the antigen processing and presentation I am just reminding you again. 
and these CD4 T cells what they are doing? They are activating the cells I mean the macrophage or something and you know the TH1 response they kill intravesicular bacteria and parasite. Another thing is happening like in B cell this can happen in macrophage and dendritic cell also, but mostly B cell is doing that extracellular pathogen or toxin it is attached to the B cell receptor then endocytic uh, vesicle is formed. Okay. So, receptor mediated endocytosis bring them inside then you know what is going to happen lysosome will fuse degrade them and then it will be presented by again what MAC class 2. This MAC class 2 is going to activate the effector CD cells uh, CD4 T cells and this is going to do two things one the B cell this interaction like this B cell receptor and antigen interaction will activate the B cell as well as the CD4 T cells which is activated by this B cell presentation it will in turn help the B cell to understand what is happening and convert them to plasma cell that signal B cell uh, is going to get from T helper cells. So, here two things actually happening activation of B cell to secrete immunoglobulin that is happened by CD4 cells and as well as the B cell is also eliminating the toxin and things from the system. this whatever I said so far it is called direct presentation. Okay. This is the direct presentation because you are directly presenting the cell, but there are something which will come into later in little more detail which is called cross presentation of exogenous antigen. Okay. So, now a question can come if it is if you were in the in front of me some student definitely will ask I am sure because I am receiving this question. So, CD4, CD8 T cells are activating the uh, activated by macrophage or dendritic cells, mostly dendritic cells. So, CD8 T cells get activated to kill the virus infected cells or tumor cells. Now, how this is going to be presented? Because if dendritic cells because CD4 T 8 CD8 T cells can be activated only by antigen presenting cells right. So, either M is either dendritic cells or macrophage should activate the CD8 T cells so that it can kill virus infected cells. So, how it will be activated the two possibility majority what is happening most of the time dendritic cells itself infected by virus dendritic cells itself infected by virus. So, that because you remember the MHC 1 is present only in three kind of cells mostly three kind of cells one is B cell another is macrophage another is dendritic cells. So, other cell MHC 1 is present everywhere, but it cannot activate the T cells activation of T cytotoxic T cell is only possible by these three antigen presenting cells right. So, if any other cells are infected by virus they cannot activate the T cells if T cells or cytotoxic T cell is not activated it cannot kill the uh, virus infected cells. So, who will activate and how it will be presented. So, that time one is direct that means dendritic cell is infected by the virus and in that case it will be presented by MHC 1, but if dendritic cell is not activated by the virus or macrophage is not activated by the virus what will happen? Then the virus infected cells virus infected cells are taken up by the macrophage and dendritic cells, because they can also do phagocytosis and micropinocytosis. So, these phag phagocytosis or micropinocytosis they internalize the virus infected cell which already has this red dot means they are the virus. So, when they take our infected dead cells they will take and this particular antigen will come through this uh, uh, phagocytosome or endocytosome this phagolysosome fusion and this will release I mean this is probable hypothesis I mean it is not exactly clear what exactly happened. So, this phagolysosome 
sometimes mix with the different vesicles. Okay, and during that mixing, they load this antigen process to the MHC1, which is expressed. Or this phagolysosome release the antigen, and this antigen is going normal process because this antigen when coming from outside, normally they are supposed to. I mean, if you remember the previous slide, external antigen is supposed to be presented by MHC2, but here it is presenting the MHC class one. So, what is happening this antigen come into the cytosol and then it is as usual like just endo, endo I mean uh, antigen like the antigen expressed in cytosol is equal to that. So, free antigen present in the cytosol will be processed as before I mean the last slide. So, this is like cytosolic pathogen. So, cytosolic pathogen growing inside the cytosol and if this particular same thing is coming again in the cytosol it will be treated as same way. So, it will take the normal path. So, that is called cross presentation. So, I am just repeating it again when virus is infecting regular other cells non immunological or non antigen presenting cells they cannot activate cytotoxic T cells cytotoxic T cell or CD8 cell need to be activated by antigen presenting cell only. If the virus most of the time virus infects the dendritic cell also, but if the virus there are some viruses which does not infect dendritic cells. So, then the activation of cytotoxic T cell is not going to be possible by the regular cells or other tissues. So, what will happen? that particular antigen will be escaped from the immune system. No, it is not happening that way. Then there is cross presentation which is very active, cross presentation is very active in the immune system. What is happening? They internalize the dead cells which take the viral antigen by regular other exosomal um, or um, uh, outside antigen like bacteria or toxin. So, they come inside the phagolysosome some directly go to MSC1 or the antigen released to the cytosol which is just going to be treated as other cytosolic pathogen and presented by MSC1. Otherwise, this kind of viral infection cannot activate the cytotoxic T cell, but it happens and it happens very efficiently in the immune system. So, presentation of cellular antigen. So, during this process normal cellular antigen if you will see something here like this clip I will come later when you will explain the cellular antigen which is present what is happening I just told you autophagy. Okay. So, when MHC is presenting the foreign antigen same process I as the very beginning of today's class I said this is the normal process is that all the protein is recycled in our inside the cell in our body. Okay. So, our own antigen is also going to be presented by MHC 2. Okay. So, this autophagosome, autophagosome means which kills our own cellular machinery which is not used or do not need. Normally, what happen when cells are under stress, it happen in even the protozoa and parasite also. When cells are under stress, they just stop many of their regular activity. Okay, they realize like many of you know that if bacteria is under stress they make endospore. So, they just suddenly stop all the metabolic activity and stay idle and waiting for better environment or the favorable environment. So, that they can multiply again same way may all our cells if they are under stress oxidative stress or heat stress they stop many of their regular activity and wait for sometimes like when the favorable condition will come. That time what happened they have lot of ribosome lot of proteins and other RNAs what is going to happen because they, the cell will not keep them because stress means suppose there is no food. So, if there is no food how they are going to get energy how they are going to make their minimum protein so that they can survive for that period stress period. So, what all the extra material of the cell they just collect in a phagosome or autophagy and this material they reuse. So, while processing all this cellular material they also normally treat as the exogenous 
um, antigen and will be presented by MHC2, but that will not cause any problem. Presentation of self antigen by MHC1 or MHC2 should not cause any problem. Why? Because all self reacting B cell receptor and T cell receptor are eliminated during the development that is the clonal deletion happen. If you remember the clonal selection that all the self reacting B cell and T cell at two different places in bone marrow as in thymus all the self reacting or self antigen reacting B cell receptor containing B cell or T cell receptor containing T cell are dying. So, even our own protein is presented by MHC 1 or MHC 2 it will not make any difference in the immune system or we will not face any problem unless there is a defect okay. and if there is a defect that is cause autoimmune disease. So, this picture you know right we have seen this before I am just going uh, repeating again. So, virus infected cell virus come inside that viral protein is synthesized inside the cell and they go to endoplasmic reticulum then endoplasmic reticulum as a process form they fit into the MHC 1 going out that is how the T cell or cytotoxic T cell can see them. This picture I mean the same slide I showed you in the very introductory chap, uh, lecture of immunology or in this course right. Now, we will see what we will see just we will enlarge what exactly happening here ok. So, what happened to normal protein? All the protein I said that when the job is over we do not need that protein anymore. Even if you need the protein every protein has a turnover number like one protein can function say 100 times some protein can function say 200 times after that they will degrade if cell needs that protein then it will cell will make again if they do not need they will stop the production. So, all once the protein is synthesized what is happened to that protein when the job I mean when their function is over or the purpose is over that will be degraded ok. So, the, uh, during protein synthesis what happened during this ribosome process many things happen ok. Uh, plicing may not be right ok, some protein may be incomplete, some protein may not be fold properly. So, this is called defective ribosomal product. So, defective ribosomal product finally, the protein is not complete or not folded properly. So, non functional uh, peptide ok. So, this non functional peptide as well as the protein which is with the cell does not require anymore all these proteins are degraded and there is a system and this system is called ubiquitin proteasome system. Proteasome is a machinery or the system which degrades the protein. They I mean I'm, I will come to uh, uh, that uh, part very quickly, uh, but that proteasome does not degrade everything. Okay. What happened if this is the protein, so some labeling is there. Okay. So, somebody is sitting inside the cell which will label this cell that the we do not need this. So, this is just obsolete. Okay. So, this protein we do not need we have to kill. So, there is a tag this is called ubiquitination. So, this ubiquitin protein are ubiquitinated and this poly ubiquitination that is not one the multiple ubiquitin protein is attached with it and that is recognized by that degrading system. So, that it will degrade ok. So, what is this proteasome? Proteasome is a complex structure complex means lot of proteins are there if you see this there are two cap like structure which is 19 s ok and there is a 20 s core structure. So, if you see if you can count there are in each color there are 7 such blob ok that means 7 protein. So, 7 7 7 7 4 7 4 alpha 7 alpha then 7 beta then 7 beta then 7 alpha total 28 proteins are there total 28 proteins are there and these 28 proteins how they are located. So, I am sure that all of you know how the carom board looks like or how the beads are how to play carom. So, if you just remember how we just arrange the beads of uh, during before playing carom board. So, there is in the center there is a bead called red and uh, along with the surface of the red what we do is we put one 
like these bits there are 6. So, instead of 6 if I draw 7 okay, what will happen? So, there will be inside there will be a gap. Okay. So, this there is nothing here. So, inside there will be a gap. If you put if you put one after another such bead. So, this is here in this case this is the this is this 7. Okay. So, what is going to happen we will see later. So, these all 28 proteins are proteolytic enzyme all 28 proteins are proteolytic enzyme. So, what is happening if you see this this yellow is the ubiquitin. So, all the proteins supposed to be degraded are tagged with this ubiquitin this 19 s subunit or this cap is hold this protein ubiquitinated, ubiquitinated protein unfold this and pass through this channel. Okay. It will be a channel like it will be a channel like so, it will be like it will be like this channel. So, inside the protein will go and when it will come it will be pieces. Okay. So, this is this is the proteasome. Proteasome is a complex structure of 28 proteolytic peptide uh, proteolytic enzyme and which is capped the its role is to bind the pro ubiquitinated protein unfold it and channelize through this channel. If you see the cross section that what I was trying to draw it is much better way it is drawing it. So, these sevens are this one then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, here is the hole. So, if there are same thing are 4, so you will see just like a barrel. Okay, the protein will enter through this and come as a chop. This is same crystal structure with uh, bigger and if you see the transverse section it looks like that. So, it is the uh, 19s part and this is 20s part where their protein is located. And again little more detailed structure this is the inside where all the protein is sitting here. So, protein when any protein cross that either of the protease will cut it and make it small pieces and this is the center space through which the protein will go. Okay. So, through this the protein will enter and go. Now, do not be scared this is very simple and straightforward. Okay. What is happening? So, it is actually if you see the whole screen is a cell if you think that whole screen is a cell and this is the nucleus this is proteasome what I was showing that barrel like structure this is endoplasmic reticulum this is considered as single cell. So, what is happening normal protein is 70 percent of the ribosome activity is normal. So, when any cytosolic pathogen like virus they are going to produce their protein most of the protein will be fine but 30 percent of the protein will be defective ribosomal product which is called as DRIP defective ribosomal products. That 30 percent protein like unfolded or incomplete will be ubiquitinated and after ubiquitination the proteasome will identify them and you see the big protein is going unfolded protein and small pieces are coming. These small pieces will be produced in the cytoplasm. So, if I stop here and then go in this channel at the same time MHC also synthesized I am talking about the MHC 1 and I told in the previous lecture the MHC molecule is very unstable even complete MHC 1 is unstable until unless it is attached with peptide and you know that MHC 1 is two protein combination one is alpha another is beta 2 microglobulin alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 by 1 gene and beta 2 microglobulin by other gene. So, they will synthesize in two different places. So, initially what happened only alpha alpha chain is synthesized which has a transmembrane domain, but this protein is unstable any protein unstable inside the cell or as long as the folding is not proper what is happening there is another set of protein called saperon they are helping them to hold their structure as long as they are not getting the final conformation. So, here calnexin calnexin is a saperon which support this MHC as long as 
beta microglobulin is not coming and help it. This is a general saponin, it is not specific to immune system. So, it helps after that what happened there are many other saponin like ERP 57, calreticulin. So, all of them cover it. So, that MAC class 1 even the beta microglobulin is attached to it, it is not stable anymore you see that there is a gap it is just cartoons to explain that it is not complete, complete will look like this very compact. So, it is even it is not very compact. So, this calreticulin ERP 57 they help this is another saponin. as soon as beta microglobulin attached with it calnexin will separate and two other saponin will come into the picture. Okay. So, they will help another protein tapsin, okay. tapsin I will come later. So, before going to tapsin what one more protein this tap, tap is you see this this structure this green one this is tap 1 and tap 2 this is a transporter it is ATP binding or active transporter which has ATP binding cassette the transporter which has ATP binding cassette is also called ATP ABC transporter AB ATP binding cassette containing transporter or ABC transporter that means active. So, this role of tap here is all the product produced here all the product produced here these product all the product produced here these product will transport from cytosol to endoplasmic reticulum. But you know any membrane whether it is endoplasmic reticulum membrane or cell membrane they are fluid right they are not rigid nothing is sitting very fixed there all are floating. So, this uh, MHC one molecule all this complex is floating somewhere tap is present here. So, tapsin what going to do is tapsin will make a bridge between them. So, it will get the complex of that MHC 1 and all other saponin and tap they will bring them together. Okay. So, what will happen? So, this complex will all together. So, tapsin will help to bring them together or uh, make them closer. So, all the proteins which is ubiquitinated cleaved by proteasome immediately it will be transported by tap it may be little bigger you see there is there is one hinge like of structure here. Okay. So, there is another protease endoplasmic reticulum aminopeptidase associated with antigen processing it is a big name right. So, you just remember ERAAP it is another proteolytic enzyme that is enough those who can remember the name is fine otherwise you can just remember that this is a protease which will cut this big piece into small because MHC 1 cannot fit bigger one it should fit small. Okay. So, even any big piece is there there is another protease sitting in the endoplasmic reticulum which will make them smaller and as soon as it will be ready to fit it will go there fit it and after this MHC bind with the peptide that will be more stable. So, all saffron will be separated. Okay, all saponin separated and this molecule will make a vesicular structure and then gradually through Golgi and trans Golgi network it will go to membrane and display there. Is that clear? So, this is the thing happening. One more important thing I should, rem uh, uh, should rem uh, inform or tell you that this proteasome system is common proteasome system is continuously working for regular cellular activity. So, they have a standard protease, okay. but to fit into MHC you need some specific cut you, if you remember the peptide that I showed you that certain amino acid are fixed okay, say hydrophobic amino acid at the tail region. So, to do that some specific protease is required. So, that specific protease this R LMP 1 they are they are L M P 1 uh, sorry L M P 2 L M P 2 sorry L M P 7 these two proteas these two proteas are replacing the proteolytic enzyme of proteasome. 
that means, out of that 7 proteolytic enzyme 2 will be replaced by 2 and 7 this is in the beta chain actually and this is the beta subunit I mean beta alpha and beta was there in beta another was M E C L 1 M E C L 1 L M P 2 L M P 7 M E C L 1. So, three different protease will replace the existing protease of proteasome which will make the peptide such a way so that it can fit into MHC 1. Okay. So, this normal process is there protease are changed and all the internal peptides are or cytosolic peptides are presented by MHC 1. This is called antigen processing for cytosolic antigen. Okay. So, this is today or I mean this is enough for this lecture. Okay then. Bye.